2-0. Um, not the best game, but a lot of really pro pro promising things and saw some positive things. Obviously, I uh, like to play better in all three phases, but uh, really thankful for some of the plays that the guys made and, and putting some points on the board by the offense. Um, so we'll look at trying to get better from now until next week when we go on the road. But for the most part, happy that we got the win. Give a lot of credit to Southern Utah. Uh, Coach Fitzgerald, he gets his team ready to play. You see it on film. They don't ever quit. They're a physical team. And so I think uh, that's their identity. I think I, I wish them the best of luck the rest of the way. Had a really good conversation with him in midfield before the game. And I think they have some really good playmakers. So um, obviously, we knew that it would be tougher uh, after we watched the film against ASU. So that. Uh, but overall, just happy that we got the win. Uh, obviously, the players are happy and really looking forward to building on this. So, um, take uh, any questions you guys may have. So, what do you got? Kalani, looking at back at the second quarter, you guys found a spark, in, in large part because you had big plays in all three phases. What what really kind of was the key to some of those big plays there in the second quarter? I think it's just really everybody just doing their job, and then the big plays happen. And you, you saw. It's unfortunate we had the same mistake happen with an ineligible receiver uh, touching the ball, and that was a loss down. You know what I mean? So, and that, that's just a formation. Um, I believe it was our running back covered up um, Chase, and that's as simple as taking a step back. So, the fact that we did that two weeks in a row doesn't make me happy. That's I'm the head coach. I, I got to figure that out, and, and it should be an easy adjustment. Um, but I don't want to make it too too big of a deal, but. It shouldn't be that hard to just check with the ref on the side. And I think you know, um, uh, Southern Utah is very familiar with what we do um, on offense, defense, and special teams. So we wanted to make sure that we, we get the calls right. And um, I think he, it was kind of late when we were breaking out of the huddle. And he kind of took his time lining up and didn't have enough time to check with the ref. And so that's, if that's the problem. Then I, gotta, then I need to take, take a time out when I see that the formation isn't right. But uh, we should get that fixed. Not a much more efficient team than, than game one. What do you see the biggest improvement from week one to week two? If you give him time to throw, then he can do he can do it. Uh, the 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 sad part about when he got hit and and the, got the pick, he, he I know where he was going for the ball, and I think it was going to be a big time play for us. But uh, we need to find ways to keep him upright because when he's there and he can throw and he can deliver the ball with the right timing, yeah, he's he's really really good. And so um, and then now he's getting a lot of confidence running the ball too. So. I think within reason, you know, I think that was a good pull that he did in the game um, and got his third rushing touchdown. I do like him throwing the ball, though. He, he's really clean, and uh, we, we have to find ways on offense to complement what he can do so we're not uh, predictable and that we're not just relying on his arm, you know what I mean? So uh, that mean, being said, that we need to run the ball more effectively, and that needs to happen. So it, it's not just the guy running the ball. It's, it's a matter of all of it, putting putting it all together. I thought big plays happened because guys were blocking well downfield. It's good to have Keanu Hill back. Uh, he brings that presence and has tons of um, tons of experience, you know. So uh, he did a great job leading the guys and uh, hope, you know, hoping that we can get. We're trying to hope we get Cody this game, but I think he'll be ready to go next week for sure. All phases of the game, one of those special teams. How do you feel? Just talk about Marcus McKenzie's performance. Yeah, Marcus McKenzie, he's a he's a, he's a playmaker. And, and his, when his brother gets home from his mission, it's going to be nice because we're going to have two McKenzies doing, doing the work. And those, they, they got great genetics. I mean, dad, I, I obviously blocked for their, his dad, you know, so their dad and, and uh, their mom was a, is a, was a track athlete here too. So it um, makes sense that he's down there. I mean, he's literally almost beaten the kick down, and that's, that's hard to do. And tons of speed, a lot of confidence. He's going to be a big-time player for us as, as, at corner. And uh, Jay was talking about we got to find ways to get him in the game because things just good things happen when he plays. So uh, I think he's earned earned a lot of a uh, lot of trust from the rest of the rest of the staff. And we'll, we'll see. I think he's practicing really nicely right now, and I think he's going to be definitely going to be a, a star for us. Why did Aiden Robbins get a carry after the first quarter? Why did he not? I don't know. I I, I don't know all the 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 answers right now for who carried what. I just want to see the ball carried with, with more intensity and get more yards. You know, I, I don't know. I have to watch the film, but 
we need somebody that can that can carry the ball and and do it do it the right way. We need someone that can block for them and make sure we get more yards. That's what we got is not good enough. So it doesn't matter who who the defense is. I, I think we're better than that. So um, we, we've got to figure it out. Whether whether it's you know whether it's Aiden that's running it or Dion or LJ. So we feel really good about all three of those guys, but uh, we can't we we're not giving them a chance right now, and that's. That's our job as coaches to get the O line, tight ends, and uh, receivers blocking the right guys. Is that someone emerging as, as LJ Martin to be that guy for you guys? He had a forward? play today that was nice. He broke tackles, and so it's just a matter of um, you know we feel like those guys are doing doing a great job. It's just who's going to run away with it, and, and it helps that you make big plays in the game. So we'll see. We'll evaluate it. Uh, those three, we we just need to see a more effective running. It doesn't matter which one of the three that's running the ball have an offensive line that does seem to be underperforming just a little bit on particularly in the run fits is it something you look at as far as like cleaning up the execution or is it look at schemed or do you just look at everything and say it's, hey. it's probably all of it you know I, you don't want to just put it on one guy or one position but uh, we expect to have a, an, an advantage up front you know that's what we expect and whatever reason for whatever reason we're not getting it out of the first two games that uh, that makes me um, happy so a Rod and the staff know that we'll fix it. We'll, we'll, we have the players that can do it. So if, if it means scheme or personnel, whatever it is, we just we're, we're already done with with two games. We got on our third one. We don't have a lot of time to to waste now. Malik and Eddie didn't play in that first series. Um, was there a reason for that? Who was that? Malik and Eddie. Yeah, um, Jay had a reason for it. They played. They missed the first series, and, and then they're back for the rest of the time. So. Uh, it's it's holding your players accountable is, is the key. You know, I uh, th they can probably tell you why it was, but usually it wasn't anything that that no one should worry about. Other than we have a standard here, and Jay, when Jay Hill has a standard, nobody's immune to it. it. Doesn't matter if you're a starter or if you're a walk-on. That's a practice squad guy. Uh, we, we expect we have these expectations, and if you don't meet it, then they don't. And the consequences happen. What do you say about what Darius Lasseter has meant to this offense? Yeah, he's awesome. It just and it's not just his playmaking ability. His his um, positivity is his. Uh, you, you look at his um, personality, and it's just you can't help but but want to be around him, you know. And and he has gifted family. <laughs> you know, he saw his brother play. So, I mean, he's a he's a. a He's a great person to be around, and and then he he happens to follow that up with great playing ability. I think, I think he did a great job today. I think maybe it was one play that I wish he that he he knows he wish he had back. But other than that, I thought he blocked better. He, he caught the ball well and, and found ways to get open. It was nice to see Isaac Rex, you know, be a force again, like he like we've always seen from him. And so I I really credit what Keaton and, and A Rod and the rest of the staff has done as far as opening up the the pass game. Now we need the we need to balance it out with with a run game to complement it. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys.